E three O me. So you start to so like start cat three plus three six plus three nine. So a lot of you guys are doing some other assignment. Very often it's shorter, which is interesting. Or it's all odd answers, which if you get the solutions manual, they actually work it out for you. So that's why it's a mixture of odd and even. So that you have a safety net on some and not on others. Because you need that practice too. To have no way of knowing is it right or you have to get that practice for the quizzes and the tests. Uh, so it, it's okay if you get a little off kilter. Like you do three, six, nine, and suddenly do 11, 14, 17, so you're off track. That's not terrible. You're still doing the same amount. You're still kind of cutting through like everybody else. One reason I do that is so I can give you all the different types of homework real quick. Instead of picking out 1, 7, 9, 11, 12, screw that. Every third one, you'll go through all the different types of homework pretty quickly. You guys with me on that? Um, let me go on a little rant about homework then. Uh, put the section number on the homework. Section 2.3, section 2.4. Cool. And uh, I think that's enough about the homework. Um, <coughs> Any questions to me before I get into something about word problems? Any specific questions? I think I have a couple that I said to hold on to. Oh, I might want to give that to you. Yes. Is, is there going to be more questions than just what you show on there? How do you mean? On the test. Oh, yeah. yeah. How many pages? Uh, I've got the practice test. You'll we'll see. Yeah. Uh, number 27 on uh, 3.4. I don't know if I did something completely wrong or if you're looking for like a fraction answer on that. Oh yeah, okay. This is the problem with the falcon and the pheasant. <coughs> right. Looks like a bad 70s movie. <laughs> this is page 192. <laughs> Section 3 4. And this one says a falcon, when diving, can travel five times as fast as a pheasant's top speed. So, if falcons eat pheasants, that sounds pretty bad for the pheasants. <laughs> if the total speed for these two birds is 222 miles an hour, blah, 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 blah. Cool. Um, so, what's the first step in a word problem? There's no picture you really draw unless you want to draw a little falcon, a little pheasant. <laughs> so it's not going to help you. Geometric problems, you'd want to draw it for yourself. Draw a triangle, draw a rectangle, whatever. But what's the first step here? Find what X is. That's the second step. Oh, you want to the find two the characters. Yeah, the players. Who's involved in this? And there are so many guys who are not doing that step, who are still doing okay with the word problems, that's fine. But if you skip that step, it's going to be that much easier to make a mistake. Some of you guys are making that mistake that I told you would happen. You see how some people focus on this uh, five times as fast. So they say, okay, five times as fast, and then they say that equals 222. This is what I see a lot of. You focus on it says five times as fast. Group. It says five times as fast, and then you just make it equal to the number they give you. What's wrong with this? Yeah, this is just one of the birds, and it says when you add them together, you get 222. So the birds are a falcon, and this is falcon speed, and pheasant speed. Now which one has to be X? The pheasant. Exactly, because the falcon is five times as fast as the pheasant. The falcon depends on the pheasant. So the pheasant has to be X. X. And of course now, there you go. There's the five times as fast for the falcon. Right, so the first step is not mathematical at all. It's just list the parts. Right? If you have a triangle, it might be the shortest side, the middle side, the longest side. If you have people's money, it might be Fred's salary, and Bob's salary, whatever. So the first step, there's no math, which is nice. It kind of helps you organize what the hell's going on. Then you come in and say, math saves our ass by saying, okay, you don't know what the hell it is, but we're going to pretend like we do. How fast does the pheasant go? X. So that's really what math does. I don't know, but I'm going to pretend that it goes x. So how fast does the falcon go? 5x. Five times as fast. So it captures the idea in a way that I can write down quickly. And now I think you're telling me, when you combine these two, 
that's when you get 222 miles an hour. I see what I did wrong. I subtracted the x from the 5x. I don't know what I was doing. Oh, I got you. I got you. <laughs> So let's go ahead and finish this guy out. What's the last step there? Divide by six. Divide by six. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. So thirty seven is what? Miles by I like it. Miles an hour. And who is it? The pheasant. Uh, the pheasant by five. That's pretty damn funny. <laughs> so the, the falcon goes five times that, right? Yep. What do you get? So you get five times 37, 185. How do you check your work? Plus one for later. What do you do with the calculator, though? Calculator, you know, solve this for me. Look at it. Oh, shit. They have a Siri. Siri. <laughs> they don't have Siri. <laughs> Siri's not going to do shit. So. Um, how do you check yourself what the two C's are supposed to do? They're supposed to add the B222, and thank God they did. All right. How are we, how are we doing there? Is that all right? So some of you guys are having no problem with this. I love it. So you really don't need that step necessarily, but that step helps even if you're really good at this to make sure you're not going to make a little mistake somewhere. Some of the rest of you guys do not skip that step. Right? That equation is not getting set up correctly, so you're not getting the right answers. Yeah. I had a question on 45. On the same page. All right. So 45. For Anybody else? Everybody's good with this one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. So number 45, what is V? No, I'll do it 45. 45, 45. So what's the first step in this one? Keep the variable Japan and USA. What about Japan and USA? <coughs> Not the numbers. I'm talking about don't don't necessarily just write Japan and USA. What about the J Japan and USA? It's uh, computers. It's yeah. Number of computers. Number of computers. Yeah. Okay, cool. But if at the least you do that, that's good. Right. Because you're saying that there's two parts to this. You need both parts in the equation. It would be a little more specific for yourself so you can answer the question easier. Okay. Fair so which one's got to be just that? Japan. Why? <coughs> yeah, the USA has some number more than Japan. So I have to know Japan first. And then, of course, now I can say USA has 162, 550 million. I like that number. These are X plus. Don't add in all zeros, by the way. These are all in millions. Just put the word million after the number you get. Right. And what are those two things supposed to do? Add up to be. Who was it? 318, 450? Yeah. Cool. And this is all in millions. I'll let you guys finish it out because now it should be the easy step. Even though the numbers are big, I don't care. Whatever number that is, you're going to subtract it and put the x's together now. Quick thing about the difference between expressions and equations. Um, I see something like this a lot. Can somebody tell me what I am doing wrong? I'm not picking on anybody because I see this a lot. So the problem that was given to me is in black. This is the problem. And in blue is what I've done. Are you 
what have I done wrong? Can I solve it? I can only solve a what? Problem. Or an equation. equation. I can only solve an equation. It's got the equal sign in it, right? I don't have a clue what the hell number this is. So I'm going to end up with not knowing what the hell anything is still. I'm going to have an x in there. I can't solve for x because it's not an equation. <coughs> don't make it equal to zero. I think I've told you guys before, it's kind of like a bleak <coughs> thing. Everything in the world is zero. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But what have I done wrong? Because you subtracted the minus 7 when it's all linear. So you should yeah, it's all on one line already. The, the mistake they're making, what is it about this problem? What is it about this problem specifically that makes it okay for me to just come in and do that as long as I also do it to the other side? Exactly. So I can only come in and subtract or add something if I have another side to balance me out. You with me? So I can't just come in that. What I've actually done, I want, I want to see you guys understand this. What I actually just did is I took the number and I subtracted 14x away from it. Do you guys see that? This is one side. What did I do to this one side overall? I subtracted 14x. So I'll bet you anything, the actual answer is going to be 14x bigger than this. I don't know if you guys are with me on that. <laughs> Main thing there is this is wrong. What should I do? You should add the, yeah. add the like, terms. 2x plus 7x. Seven seven 9x. 9x. And isn't that 14 more than negative 5? I'm seeing that more and more, especially when you start learning equations, your brain just kind of starts going, oh, I see a plus five, I want a minus five. You know, that's, I don't know, dude, wait. <laughs> These are all on the same line, like you said. I love it. There's no other side to it. I don't have to move one from one side to the other. I can just put them together. They're already together. I can put them together. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions from homework? Yeah? <coughs> um, number 11 on 4.1. Well, the shaded one. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't it be 3 and 11 twelfths and then you just multiply? 3 and 11 twelfths. So on number 11, you've got. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Four, five, six, seven. That's exciting. And everything's shaded except for this dude. Right there, and there. Everybody, 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 everybody. Aww. So there's two ways to look at this problem. How many total, uh, I've got one, two, three complete. Right? So it's three whole ones. And how many out of how many? Five out of six. Five out of six, I love it. Right? <coughs> oh, yeah, because I was thinking that there was, never mind. I just threw it wrong. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Because I was trying to figure out how you got the 12 in there. Yeah. I <coughs> Now what's the other way to look at this? How many total little cubes are filled in? Yeah. 6, <coughs> 12, 18, <coughs> and 5 is 23, right? Yeah. So it would be 23 cubes out of 6 cubes that each one has. So 23 out of 6. Now look what we just did. 6, 12, 18. So that's 3 sixes, right? That's 18. Plus 5. And how do you change this mixed number into an improper? 6 times 3. 18 plus 5 plus extra five. 23. See, so physically, visually, what the math we do from here to here is the same as if you just look at it visually. Something physical you can actually hold. Thank God. Right. Math is so often something so vague. Fractions are actually very physical, <coughs> in physical meaning. How are we doing so far? Is that, you guys see that? So there's three whole ones and five sixths of one, or there's 23 blocks, and they're each one cut into six pieces. So 23 out of six. Okay. Maybe, maybe. 
Yeah, if you look at it as a complete thing, like this is like if this was one giant together thing cut into um, <coughs> like that, and this is one guy, then that is 23 out of 24. Now here, these two would be 12 out of 6. Let me stop right there. This one would be 6 out of 6, wouldn't it? And this would be another 6 out of 6. Isn't that 12 out of 6? Are you guys semi with me? This isn't this full one. That's six ones out of six that are full, right? And this is six out of six that are full. And this is six out of six that are full. And this is five out of six. Six, six plus six, six is twelve sixths. Why does that make sense so far? Twelve sixth is what number? Twelve divided by six? Two. Two. And how many do I have so far? Two full ones. Do one more. Six and six and six is 18. So I got 18 six and that is three. I got three full ones. And then of course, plus the five, six is the 23 out of six. Cool. So in a way, I understand what you're saying, but they didn't put it all into one big thing. If I had one thing cut into 24 pieces, then I can look at it as 23 out of 24. Because it's not quite a whole one, is it? What's the difference here? It's more than a whole one. In fact, it's more than three whole ones. Okay. Maybe, 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 maybe. Okay. Example? Yeah. Yeah. That's two, two more. Number 13 it shows them all together. Yeah, exactly. I love these. <laughs> so they slammed all those together. It's not a whole picture, so it's going to be some fraction less than one. Whereas this is more than one complete one. It's got to be some fraction more than one. Because it's definitely more than a complete thing full. I like it. Cool. Okay. Any other questions from homework? Oh, no. Taking that as a note. Okay. Yeah, okay. Maybe sit here. Three point four, number forty-two. Oh, okay. <coughs> Oop, started doing the problem. So this one says a tractor and a plow attachment are worth twelve hundred dollars. Number forty-two, page one ninety-four. So the tractor and a plow are worth $1,200. The tractor is worth seven times as much money as the plow. So what's our first step there? What? All right. What do we got? We got who's the players? No X's yet. No math. Just English. Yeah, I got a tractor and I got a plow. And this is the value of each. So which one is going to be just X? That's your next step. First step, just English. Second step, who depends on the other guy? The other guy is going to have to be X, so I can write the first two. <coughs> right, so in this case, the tractor is seven times as much as the plow. So the plow's got to be X, so then I can write the tractor is seven times as much. So <coughs> seven X. Yeah, so now together they have to make $1,200 worth of stuff, right? So then you have plow plus the tractor, plow plus tractor. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. $1,200. All right, and then you guys can finish that out. Cool. X plus 7X, 8X. <coughs> Good. So go ahead for yourselves. All right, you guys can finish that out, right? So now should be the semi-easy step. Getting to the equation normally is the hard step. Solving that bad boy should be the easy step now. <coughs> yeah? OK, maybe I'm just completely missing something. But I'm wondering on 45 why it's not set up the same way. Why is x plus x plus 
163. In this case, 162. In 162 this case, over. one of the players was seven times as much. I if I would have said the tractor was seven dollars <coughs> more than the plow, what would this have been? If I would have said it's seven more than the plow, this would have been x plus seven. But in 45, wasn't it something or a thousand times no. x there too? Mm -mm, no, because no. in number 45, um. the USA has that many more computers than Japan. That's an addition. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Sorry. That's all right. So I don't want word problems. The, the best way to approach a word problem is to just let go of feeling like you're supposed to solve it after one time of reading the problem. That's crazy. So the steps I take you through, I'm going to force you to look through it a few times. First step, don't even worry about the numbers. Don't worry about two more than. Don't worry about they add to be 800 or whatever. Just what, in English, what's the players? Then you come back in and say, OK, who's got to be x? And now you start worrying about the two more than or the seven times as much to see how they relate to each other. And then you look through the damn thing one more time and say, now what are they supposed to do together? So to really do a word problem well, you have to look through it a few times. Don't feel like you're supposed to know the answer after reading it once. That's crazy. You with me? So I'm trying. My steps I'm taking you through will help you set up the equation, but they also hopefully force you to look through it a couple times. First step, screw the numbers. Just physically, what, what tractor and plow, bob and seed, whatever. Right? Okay, so any other questions from Homer? You want to do 43? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've been wanting that 43 for a while, let's see. All right, so I know you didn't have to do 43. Maybe give a little good um, practice. So 43 says, during the 2008 Women's Basketball Championship game, Tennessee wins too much. Tennessee Lady Volunteers. Look, Tennessee. Guys, I'm reading to you. Tennessee scored 16 points more than the Stanford Cardinal team. Look, the young books. Say Look, the young books. Oh, yeah, but different. Come see me after. Yeah. So I can see which. No, after. After. After class. Okay. Any other questions from? All right. So, what I want to do today is I want to go back. Uh, yeah. Go back over some of the fraction stuff here. Um, I think. I think last time we made it up. To four or five, believe it or not. I mean, so this book really breaks it down a lot. Every section really just covers one idea. So if I add things with like denominators, that's one section. If I add them with unlike denominators, that's another section. So, but they both have the same idea. If I want to add two fractions, what do I need? Like terms, I love it. So I have here I have four fifths plus one fifth is how many fifths? Yeah. And of course five divided by five is one. I love it. The mistake I see a lot is the mistake I see a lot is four fifths plus one fifth becomes five tenths. Where do you guys think that came from? So it's sort of like saying um, 4x plus x is 5y. That's really what that's saying. Does that make any sense? No, 4x plus x is 5x. So 4 fifths plus 1 fifth is 5 fifths. That fifths is like x. So it has to be the same, just like the x's have to be the same for me to add them. So if instead I had um, four fifths plus one tenth, is that five fifteenths? 
That's the new trick, right? You guys see where that came from, right? This is not 5 fifteenths. If I want to see the equivalent thing in algebra, that's 4 fifths, so like 4x plus 1 tenth. That's a whole other dude. Plus 1y. Can you put those together? Hell no. I'm really desperately trying to show you like denominators are really just like terms. Same idea. Now, some of you guys hate like terms. I'm sorry. I just added that list. Made it a little longer. What you hate. But what do I have to do here? Find the common cool. Yeah. What is the LCD? 10. Yeah. It's got to be something that can both multiply up to the cut. So the LCD is always going to be at least as big as something there, if not bigger. <coughs> In this case, it's only 10 because 5 can become 10. Okay, cool. Now, I can make them both 20, couldn't I? Yeah. I could both by n by 4 and n by 2. Yeah. But what's wrong with making them both? There's really nothing wrong with it, but is it an LCD? No, no. no it'd just be a CD. <laughs> right? It'd just be a common denominator, not a lowest. And what's so special about the stupid lowest common denominator? <laughs> it makes it easier to simplify at the end, right? If I make it too large of a denominator, I might end up with an answer that's really difficult for me to reduce. I want to keep all my numbers lower. Cool. So then you multiply by what? Two. Two. And of course you get nine, nine tenths. I love it. Now, what's different between adding, subtracting, and multiplying, dividing? What's the main difference? I love it if somebody would say, okay, adding, subtracting, no. What's the main difference procedurally? If I had the same problem, four fifths, but I multiplied it by one tenth. No, I, I want to multiply. Do I need LCD now? No. No, I don't. Right? Yeah. I don't need an LCD here. I only need like terms when I'm adding, subtracting. You with me? I don't only need like terms. Can I add x and x squared? <laughs> Hell no is the right answer. But can I multiply x times x squared? Yeah. yeah. Sure I can. See, so multiplication is like, you don't have to be like terms necessarily. It's yeah, it's a little more flexible than adding, subtracting. Adding, subtracting is like, oh shit, you got to be exactly the same. Rock. Both by and divide is like, uh. No. So here, I do not make this 8 tenths. You're just making all your numbers bigger than they really have to be. One way you can do this is just to go straight across, right? Yeah. 4 times 1? 4. 5 times 10? 50. But what can I do with this? What goes into both of those? The 2, right? So I can divide by 2. 2 over 25. Now, another way to do this, another way to do the same problem is to reduce first. Now, in this problem, the numbers are not crazy big. So either way is fine. But you know I'm going to make a problem where the numbers are kind of big. So when you multiply them, they come, become stupid big. I would love to reduce them first, get them small first, so they don't get crazy big on me, right? Cross, Cross divide here. Careful. <coughs> Because when I multiply and I divide, those can cancel. What ter what common thing multiply. here could cancel out? Multiply. A 2. So 2 goes into 4 two. twice. 2 goes into 10. 5. 2 times 1? 5 times 5? Same answer, of course, right? Because either you divide by 2 first or you divide by 2 at the end. Maths out, I don't care. Do whatever order you want to. Humans, we say, shit, I want to divide first only so my numbers don't get crazy big. So here, try this one. Fruit. Fruit. Uh, let's see.
And see, I certainly would not want to do it this way, yeah. right? Because yeah. then you get 360 over 225. That's, that's ugly. You can still do it. Don't, don't get me wrong. That's, that's got to work eventually. It's just not a place I want to take myself. So what's a much better way to do this? Yeah, 9 goes into 9 once, goes into 18 twice. What goes into these two? 5 goes into 20. 4? 2 times 4? 8. 5 times 1? 5. All right, see, that's awesome. 1 and 1 third. Oh, so 1 and 1. 1 and 3 fifths. I like it. Either way. Because 5 goes into 8 once with 3 left over, right? That's the idea with the mixed numbers. We all good there? Is that all right? We need the last one. Either one, yeah, unless they ask for a specific. Sometimes I'll say, leave your answer as a mixed number, or leave your answer as, what do you call this guy? Uh, improper. Improper. That's right. That's not one. So you know on a quiz or a test, I would probably say something like that. Leave your answer as a mixed number or something. What I'll probably be, do to tell you the truth is I'll give you a problem like this, uh, and I'll say turn that into an improper fraction, just a little more direct. And then it's up to you to leave your answer to a problem like this. You can leave it either way, whatever you like better. But I just need to check to make sure you can do it if you had to. So how would you convert that into an improper fraction? Times that. I like it. Eight times seven. Plus Fifty-six plus three. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. Cool. Have you checked yourself? Eight goes into fifty-nine seven times. With three left over. Cool. All right. All right. Yes, sir. I don't get the four. Oh, what a divide. What can go into both twenty and twenty-five? What number can go into both? A five. So what's 20 divided by 5? And what's 25 divided by 5? 5. So I mean, if I had, if I had this as a problem, how would you reduce that by itself? Because what goes into both? How do you reduce it? Yeah, 5. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. There's the 4. 25 divided by 5 is 5. There's the 5. So I really want you guys to understand. That 20 is on the top, isn't it? Yeah. And that 25 is on the bottom, is it not? Right. So that 20 over 25 would act the same way as if it was just one fraction. It does the same thing. That is multiplying and that is dividing. So they should cancel common factors the same way they would if they were more directly on top of each other. You guys with me? And again, I need to keep saying this every now and again. A lot of you guys have very different backgrounds. Some of you guys just barely placed in here. Some of you guys haven't taken math in a long time. Some of you guys might have been misplaced. Maybe you should be in a higher math course. So don't look to your neighbor and say, oh, yeah, they, they all get it. I'm not going to ask a question. Group. Stop. Don't look to your neighbors. Just go ahead and ask the question. If you have a question, at least 10 other people have the same question. So don't feel like it's too easy, or I don't want to say anything, or I'm embarrassed. Screw that. There's at least 10 other people that have the same problem. And if I'm going too slow, oh well, get ahead and homework. <laughs> um, what about division? So dividing fractions, like um, 8, 11 divided by 16 over 33. Cool. So you divide fractions, you do what? Multiply by the reciprocal. <coughs> Guys, wait a minute. So then what can I do with this? What's a good idea here? I really don't want to do 8 times 33, right? Yeah, cross, divide. So what goes into 8 and 16? Yeah. 
I like it. Eight goes in eight once. Yeah. Eight goes into sixteen twice. So if it was eight over sixteen, that would be one half, and that's exactly what we're saying. It's one half. Eleven goes into thirty-three. One times three. One times three. One times two. And if you want to, you can write that as. I like it. Two goes into three once with one left over. Cool. So tell me this. Does anybody want to tell me right now while we're talking about fractions? What is it about fractions that gets you the most? What do you want to I'm see explained? So what is it? <coughs> Don't <laughs> automatically freeze up. <laughs> you know, it's easy to say that, but it's I, easy. I know, it's serious, yeah. so. Don't come at them as if you're you're already saying, oh, fractions are too hard. Then you don't then you don't have a damn chance, right? <laughs> Come at it more like this. Okay, are the, am I adding fractions? So then your brain, just go away from the fractions and think when I add fractions, I need LCD. Okay, now I know how to attack it. Or am I multiplying or dividing? What kind of problem is this? Don't just see a fraction and give up, right? Because then you have no chance. Um, anything more specific? You guys know he wants to admit it, okay. It might be difficult to say it in words because maybe everybody feels more like Charles. I don't know what it is, but they just freak me the hell out. So when I see them, <laughs> screw it. Right? Um, let me let me give you a problem with no fractions in it, and then I'll give you one that's like it with fractions in it, and you tell me what I should do. What's that little dot mean, by the way? Multiply. Multiply. So what do you do first? So never forget that you could distribute. And it would be wrong. It's just I, distribution is really for when I can't do what first? What I can't do inside. So if I had this, then I have to distribute. Now to tell you honestly, if you distribute, that's fine. We'll do it, in fact. If I do order operations, that's... Nine. Nine? Six. 36 a lot. Now if I come in, I'm sorry. Now if I come in and do it a different way, if I distribute first instead, oh, I see. I have to which you should not do, by the way. It's not wrong, it's just easier to do this. Four times two, eight. Four times seven, 28. Eight plus 28. You know? which is not David Blaine magic. It's just, of course it comes out to the same number. It's the same problem, right? So why wouldn't you want to just the line where you're I'll show you. Here, before I make the uglier problem, look at this problem. Um, 11 times uh, 290 minus 288. <laughs> just to really hammer this home. Would you rather do in here first, or would you rather distribute first? Uh, I would much rather do that, because that's just <coughs> two. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, I mean, on a problem like this, it's about the same amount of work. The numbers aren't big anywhere. It's not a big, not a terribly big deal. But there's a really good example where that is excellent. 11 times 290. <coughs> don't want to. I don't have to, right? By going by the book, I shouldn't. By the book, do inside the parentheses first. So now what about this problem? I promised you fractions. And you're all like, you can break that promise, John. <laughs> How evil do I want to be? Now, my purpose for doing this problem is to show you, now, like Charles said, and I know a lot of us feel the same way, we'll see the problem and we'll just freeze up. We don't even stop to think, what should I try to do first? We just say, fractions, and we move on. Hope he doesn't see that one. Um, but what 
is going on here? What's the difference between uh, this problem or that problem and this problem? The only difference is the type of numbers I put in. The problem is the same. I've got a number times the difference of two numbers. <coughs> so order operations doesn't give a shit what I put in there. Order operations says if it's in the parentheses, I do that first. You could break it, you distribute, but here you definitely, I don't know. Right. So in here, what's the idea in there? Beautiful. They need common denominator, which is 16. So I'm going to make this guy's already 16. If I multiply him by 2. I made this even better than I thought. That's cool. Are you guys sitting there? In order for me to subtract these, I must have an LCD. I must have a common denominator, right? And what would the LCD be between 8 and 16? They can both become 16. So that right there is not a different problem than what we were just doing a minute ago. I've just stuck a four-fifths on the outside. I don't care about that stupid four-fifths. I do that next. My original problem is subtracting two fractions. And I can't subtract fractions unless they have the same denominator, right? So to make this become 16, yeah. and whatever I do to the bottom, a lot like an equation. If I multiply one side of an equation, I get a, and same thing with fractions. If I multiply the top side, I better multiply the bottom side. Keep it even. So then that's how I get 6 sixteenths. And now what's 6 sixteenths minus 1 sixteenths? 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths. What's the great thing about this one? The fives. Yeah. Go away. Yeah. And four goes into 16. One and four. four. Now, now watch. I'll get this answer sometimes. What's wrong with that answer? The four should be on the bottom. Yeah. So all this mess, four fifths times three eighths minus one sixteen, just ends up being a quarter. That's kind of cool. You can say twenty five percent. If you wanted to, but we're not there yet. Uh, uh, <coughs> not going there. Or one, or Let me say, make it more official. No. I want your answer as a fraction. Yeah. Yeah. When we get to percentages, it, then it we'll be big. It would be, but don't say it. I need to see the fractions for right now. Okay. So I'll tell you what. Let me do this. Let me give you guys the practice test. I want you to look it over and see if there's anything major that you have questions about. So make sure you have a front and back. Our printers are ganging up on the Thanks, Omar. Oh, that's right. So when's the test? <coughs> A week from today. Thursday is going to be review day, just like always. So Thursday I'll have the answer. No. I don't want to see these. Next Unless you have a question on it, because I'm going to give you the answer key, so I don't yeah. need to see it. So when is yeah, next yeah. Tuesday? Next Tuesday is the test, right? The ninth. 
Tuesday, October 9th. You guys with me? So that's on the homework sheet. So you can always refer to that for dates. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to do the parentheses first, right? And if there's a 2x subtract 5, you can't do that. Well, that's where you have to use what? What we were talking about earlier, you have to use distributive property. So, on one level, you guys should be, I think I've already talked about this, but just to remind you, on one level, you guys should be kind of, I don't know if upset's the right word, but maybe upset is the right word. You talk about freaking PEMDAS crap, and then you come in here and you say, oh, well, let's multiply first. So, on one level, you guys should be like, what the hell, man? Um, but I think I've shown you this before. If I had something like this, oh, and that's not you 10, Jeff. Good boy. All right. I think I've shown you this before. What does a coefficient really mean? And don't tell me three times. Three something doing what? I mean, what does a coefficient really mean? What does 3x mean? Okay, on one level it means three times x. But on another level it means three x is doing what? The same thing. I'm, I'm hoping add it, right? Because if it was x cubed, it would be 3x is multiplied. So this is the same thing as this. Okay, cool. So now I want you with me here. Do you ever have to do what I'm about to do? No. In fact, don't. But I'm just explaining why distribution works. PEMDAS says you must do in here. And your statement it was perfect. What the hell can I do in there, PEMDAS? Me alone. Right? So, but what I can do instead is to realize a coefficient means three, this many of these <coughs> adding. So I can just write this, add it to this, add it to this. Right? There's nothing wrong with that at all, because that's what a coefficient means. How are we doing so far? Are we okay? So I have three of these adding. That's what that means, right? What's the quick way to do two plus two plus two? Three twos is six. So didn't I just collect them together? So what's this plus this plus th three of those things? So I'm just going the other way. Now what can I do? <coughs> three x plus three x plus three x. Nine x. Minus seven, minus seven, minus seven. Minus 21. So don't do this step. I want to show that step to you to show you why it works. And you should be upset. You should say, Jeff, you said rules never change. Tim Dot said this. What's your problem? But this is what it's doing. So what's the shortcut now? The tried and true distribution that we're used to, right? So that's the verification of that. That's why it works. That's why it's not breaking order operations at all. It's just rewriting the problem in an easier way to do it.
do a different section. Hey guys, guys, hold on. Four three. Four four three number twenty seven. Twenty seven. Section 4 3. Now, this one's kind of interesting. This one has something I haven't really touched on yet, but what's the first thing you can do here? Yeah, to divide that fraction, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. Now, let me point this out, guys, let me point this out. I've done problems that might make it seem like you could only do this. Of course you could still do this. Do you guys see how something goes into both of those? But actually there's a little more direct thing, isn't it? If I, you could do up and down, or you can do bottom top, bottom top. Either one, as long as one's on the top and one's on the bottom, you can reduce them. Cool. So, but this is so much easier here because 5 goes into 15. I'm with you. And this will be. Yeah. So negative 1 times 1. Minus 1. And 3 times 2. 6. 6. Cool. Yes? I'm confused because in the book, the negative is in the middle of 6 and 15. Oh, I'm with you. So I think. Yeah, you're right. But, so what I did automatically without even thinking about it, I can have a negative in three different places. This is the same as this is the same as this. You with me? No. All right, let me try this. What's uh, negative 8 divided by 4? All right, what's 8 divided by 4 with a negative in front of it? <coughs> 8 divided by 4 is 2 with a negative. And what's 8 divided by negative 4? Negative 2. So they all say the same thing. They all say, okay, it's 8 divided by 4 basically, but you better have a negative on it. So all three of those are the same way. So what I normally automatically do is I put it on top. That's the way we're used to seeing it. So then it's very clear where it is. Because if you leave it out front, sometimes it doubles itself and then it cancels somehow magically. So Make it attached to the top one so you don't forget it. Cool. All right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, section 4.1, number 54. Where you graph the number. Oh, yeah. Okay. Guys, real quick, if I had this, right. I've cut this into eight parts. So this is just like a ruler or something. If these are inches and I lay this down and something is this long, how long is that? <coughs> Is it a whole inch long? Remember, my scale is different up here. It's how much of an inch? One eighth of the way, right? So that would be one eighth of an inch. So the actual question is, if I lay something down and it's this long, there's two ways you can say that. It's definitely more than an inch. How much more exactly? One eighth more. So you could say it's an inch and one eighth, right? So one and an eighth inches. Or you can say it's one zero six and eight nine eighths inches. And of course, they're the same number if you just change one to the other one, right? You guys semi with it? So this is something nice. This is something more physical. We're used to, we have to measure things sometimes. 
If I need to go to Home Depot and have them cut some lumber so it fits in something, I'm going to be pretty damn exact. So you can round sometimes, but not when you want to do that. 47 and 3 quarter inch, you can't, oh, let's make it 48. It won't go inch it. That would be a problem, you with me? So we have to be precise. So we, hopefully most of us have actually measured something that was some fractional piece of an inch. So I like that for a physical place where fraction stuff. Is that cool? All right. So that's plenty. I've kind of planned on letting this out a little early. Because I have to get uh, So next time I'll have the answer key for the practice test. Not the quiz is graded. Thank <laughs> you.